Bradford Milburn assigned B still life. Time. Well, my first impression here is that we have kind of an overly yellow cast to everything and a somewhat foggy looking. Now, I'm not looking at your laptop because this is foggy here yet. Oh, let me show me this. I'm not used to your projector. It's fine. Yeah, fine. Okay. Um, I would love to see some white whites in this to start with. We've got three things kind of going together in, in the composition. The hourglass is obvious. Uh, I'm The candle somewhat shows us time. I'm not sure what the globe is doing, although you have the whole thing of the, the time zones. Um, I would just love to see the, the color of light coming. I'm guessing now that it, the, as I look at the background, it looks like it's coming through some window shades of some sort, and they're throwing this color cast on everything. Um, you probably need to just reduce the amount of yellow in processing, and that might just whiten everything up for you. Um, that's my overall feeling on this is like, whoa, we are just way yellow. The globe's not, the top of the globe especially is not, not sharp. You almost have to be by definition here on a tripod. So you have all the, you have the ability to get all the depth of field that you want. Um, right now it's a six. Gnome, no evil. Okay, so remember what I said about hard light. Okay, this is really, really hard light. And it's that it's not overly attractive. And what I want you guys to get to, to start doing when you're, when you're looking at still life, also when you're looking at things like outdoor portraiture and that kind of stuff, never have the light anywhere near your camera. Never have the sun behind you when you're doing an outdoor portrait. 99% of your of a still life of a shot like this could have been done with one of those screens on one side, put a light up there, put a white diffuser on the other side, whichever way you want to go. And it's just a completely different feel. Now you've got good texture in the beards. Kudos for that part. But again, the, the lighting here is just so, so, so harsh. I get the rocks, just a, a way to, to, to get them not being in a line, kudos for that. Um, again, the coloring of the background doesn't do anything for you. You really want to go either bright white or me, I would want to go black and almost crop that out. Okay, this could be top 20% or so of this shot doesn't need to be there. So if you look right through here, it can just go away. You can just crop that out. Crop a lot closer on the sides. You've, I'm assuming you did this at home. Try it again with your light on the sides and a reflector on the other side and see what you get. This is solid. Orange crystals. Well, this is pretty hard to do because you have to come up with a way to get, are you sure this is right side up? Um, you have to get a way to get the light through the crystals. And you've done that. You've made them glow a little bit. The problem here is this area, that background area being so hot. And this little guy right up here. For competition guys, you got to think about this kind of stuff because the bottom half of this shot, cut this right here, is pretty nice. The top half of the shot falls apart because of, and I hope you understand, because of that lighting on that background. That's a seven. 
is the memories. What is this is, I'm assuming you own all this stuff. Taking the, the title, which I almost never do, into account. You've got all these keys and then all these letters, you've got music, you've got postcards, you've got all this cool stuff. But it's it's laid out so symmetrically, and in that the spacing between everything is almost the same. So let's work on composition. Let's put it in a pile and find one or two or, th or three pieces of your correspondence that you really like and, and work with that. Now, okay. I wish this was at the end. We have two lights going here. We have a light on the right and we have a light on the left. How do I know that? If anybody has an idea before I say, tell me. Two shadows in the heart. Okay. okay. See the shadows right here? Okay. So you're gonna a shadow over here where the light on the light on the left is. We don't have anything over here tall enough maybe I'm, I'm surprised that guy does he has a little bit of a shadow but this guy here's got two shadows remember what i said about one screen one diffusing screen and you can make a diffusing screen out of some long canvas stretchers and a white shower curtain but the canvas stretchers now are so expensive that you're better off just getting that folding thing that you're never going to be able to refold again. Okay. And put that light on one side, put a reflector on the other. Now, here's the deal. This metal is going to have some detail in it. And I'm looking for one anywhere. Let's look at this guy right down here. Okay. That actually looks like metal. The rest of this is all dark and it shouldn't be dark. And it's dark because there's nothing up here. Now, good for you, you're shooting in a dark room, but bad for you because you if you put a white card over the top, metal goes, it's going to glow. And then I thought, boy, I've gone on, on and on and on about this one shot. Eileen, I told you this was going to happen. And put everything in a pile, get a lot closer, try two or three of your correspondence pieces that you really like. Light it from one side, diffuser, card over the top, and see what you get. Right now, it's a six. But keep working on it. You've got all the makings of a really fun shot. Nature golden ratio. There you go, but that's fine. Um, maybe they're the same thing. This is very nicely done. I really, 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 really want you to have, again, guys, it's a competition. The top of that has got to be sharp. The rest of it's really nice. I like letting the background from these rocks go soft. But again, you've got to have enough depth of field to hold the cell. And you can, I mean, Dude, man, you're not buying film. So you can shoot this 20 different ways at 20 different f stops. Just keep getting, you know, smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Also, don't focus here. Focus, always focus a third of the way into your shot because depth of field carries two thirds to the back and one third of the front. So you could easily focus in here somewhere and hold the front, and maybe that'll help you get the back if that's really a problem. As it is, it's a seven. It's, it's you, you've got a good lighting system here. This is a nice theme. You can work with this a thousand different ways. Old school. Well, 
I'm assuming this has some toning in the processing here. It's not, not bad, but I'm not sure it actually helps anything. Um, my real problem with it is it seems overly bright. And the background isn't helping you any. In that, yeah, man, it's it's really bright, and that that kind of helps to define the the back of the camera and the little man. But it's so bright that you, I keep looking at those lines in the the wood, back that wood three feet off, and it becomes a totally different shot. Also, you might want to find a more interesting table, but that's not the end of the world. Overall, it's just a little bit hot. I don't know that you need the little man, even. If you just got the camera and put... So here's, here's, here's an exercise. Again, assuming you own all this stuff. If you put your light almost to the back of the table on the right-hand side, you're going to get a beautiful highlight right here, right across the top of that. And you're gonna get a little highlight on this guy and you're gonna get a highlights on the chrome pieces up here. You're gonna get, you're gonna move the light back far enough. Now with anything, the camera, you're gonna move it back far enough and all of a sudden you're gonna get this highlight. Okay, okay, there's step one. Now you can bring a nice reflector in or maybe another light, nice reflector in from the other side to fill in everything. The bellows and everything looks really nice on this side. But again, it's just, it's, it's, it's like, it's just flat lit plus the, the uh, background. Lavender lights in a vase. Say it again. Lavender lights in a vase. A fun exercise. And kudos for doing it. Um, so you either had a lavender light or you have uh, LEDs will turn any color you want them to now, or you had a purple gel or you had something that was purple that you could light the back of the boss. The boss is sharp top to bottom, really nice. I'm not sure what the little blue guys are in here, the little blue spots in this section, kind of. Um, and I have old man shaky hands, so the dumb laser things all over the place. I don't know what for that. Um, but my my only problem here is that the thing's not symmetrical. I mean, first of all, one thing you've got a little hot spot up here. Just touch that out. But your center piece here is not centered. Your your converging lines on the bars are not symmetrical. And if you're going to shoot this. Either make them way up or make them perfectly symmetrical. So you've even got a little black area right here that's a little bit bigger than the little black area over here. Like make everything symmetrical. And you you might have more than this in your shot. But we need symmetry or we need it to be way off. It can't look like you almost got it. Okay. It's a seven. But I have a question for you. The rule here is light blue teal looking. Is that the way it is on the laptop or is that just the way it's projecting? The what looks? The rule, a little line around the outside. Oh, you're in here. The stroke. The stroke, yeah. Hard to tell. It looks kind of whitish. If you, if you, and, then, and this might just be the projection, if you add color, no. Color, then it's the projection you can ignore it. It's a seven. Okay. I have a five to rescore. So we have nothing for it now. They were nice to me until right now. <laughs> nothing, nothing. Everything's fine. Nothing to see up here.
six and eight. We'll try to avoid that. Yeah. Sign B, still life, honorable mention. Gnome, no evil, Bill Hansen. Old school, Bill Hansen. Lavender lights in a vase, Al Figuccio. And equal merit, orange crystals, Alpha Gucci. Nature golden ratio, Alpha Gucci. Okay, for Milburn assigned A, still life. Flowers. When something is textured like this or run through a topaz filter or whatever, you kind of have to, in, in, a, in a class like this, you kind of have to judge it two ways. First of all, what did the original shot look like? And it's not badly done. Um, you can see where the light is. The light is off to our left because of the highlight on the vase, but it didn't blow anything out. I wish I knew what the background was because the texturing may be actually helping it. It's really hard, guys, to judge something like this with this much of a filter on and this much texturing in, in a competition that's not about um, you know, it's, it's nativity as, as a theme. This is totally acceptable. I, I got you. I hear you. Because of that, it's a seven but it becomes outrageously subjective on the judge's part. Like, do I like that or not? And it's actually, to me, it's actually very attractive. It's a silent. Shiny sleep. So when you're, when I at least, judge competitions you have you have really two sets of criteria and doing when when we change to the the two two scores like you get your score and then, and then we score it again it somewhat made that easier the first round was the first thoughts are how is it as far as all those things the judges always tell you does it have clean edges is it sharp is it blah 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 the second part of it, to me, was always the show me what you got. Show me your creativity. Blow my socks off. And this is a blow my socks off shot. You kind of know what it is. I'm not sure how it was done. The only little, very picky, oh my God, sure. Is this little area down here? Just take this area, the darker teal, and copy it into that area for me. Going forward, this is a seven. Screwed. Very nicely done. Your, your score around the outside, guys, you can go down to one pixel. This is a little heavy. So when it's heavier than that, it becomes part of the shot. Really nice light. As I look at this, I'm seeing a, a, a bigger light on the left. Bigger by, I mean, the physical size of the light. 
because of the highlight on the on the screw on the left side of the screw is higher is fatter than the, on the right hand side but there is something on this right hand side which gives you the right hand side of the screw otherwise it would have gone black now there's 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 two ways of doing this you can do it on black plexi or you can just do it and then in copy it and invert it and create the reflect either way it works it's very nicely done it's a seven Walk with flowers Man. So I want somebody to have the nerve to give that to his girlfriend. What a young wife should ought to know. I'm going to guess that was not written in, you know, like the last hundred years. Um, So now we've taken lighting out of the question, unless you have a big diffuser over the top of this, which you may or may not. Um, I'm, I'm not sure that I understand the books and the flowers in the grass. Like to me, the obvious thing here would have been Walt Whitman's thing, Leaves of Grass, if somebody could find a bound thing of that. I'm sure there's others, but we've got so much negative space here, and the, uh, the this is so 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 flat. Again, I'm not sure how this is lit because it almost looks like there's a giant diffuser here with the light coming through it. And if so, kudos for trying that. But it's just not working. It's just too flat. Put your lights on the sides. Put your light directly over the top, coming down. Give us some shape, or behind it. To make the flowers grow a little bit. Also, let's look at the background. You got grass, you got darkness back here, you got a line back here. Guys, it's a competition. Again, one millimeter on the stroke. This is six. Near and weak. I'm the only judge you'll ever meet that will not just have. Over the fact that you cut this off. If you have it included going forward. Otherwise, this is another very, very nicely done shot. Beautifully linked. Very nicely. This little guy here facing me, I'm not particularly thrilled with, but I can overlook it because the overall impact of the shot is so great. You have a crossover in lighting, you have a field light and you have this this hot lime green light very very effective very cool shot again you might clean up the the, the composition a little bit did this old group need to be in it i'm not sure you might have this 25 different ways you've got a hot blue light under here or something under there causing that very effective uh very impactful it's a silent Two. Anything I said on the other one, I'll say on this one. It's a seven. Bulb swirls. This looks familiar. And if I liked it then, I liked it now. Um, very cool concept, very nicely carried out. That's a seven, very nice, very impactful. Flowers. Can we go back? So the one thing I would love to see here, and this is being really super picky, but this is what's gonna give in a, in a major, major position. 
vision. You can solder a wire onto the, the threads on the far side and on not the same wire onto the base, plug that in. You do this exposure, then you do an exposure with the thing plugged in so that the light bulb lights, obviously it's gonna be very fast because you don't wanna just, just blow it out. You want just some glow in those filaments and it would really add something to, it's already a great, a good shot, but it would be just a spectacular shot if you went these filaments, just saying. Okay, so this, uh, Flowers. What else? What was that? Flowers. Flowers. You said flat lit twice, and I thought, yeah. Um, is that as milky on your screen as it is up there? Can't really. Uh, That's fine. We're not really supposed That's to show us. <laughs> I've always thought got we should. A, got we a should it. Yeah. Um, my first impression here, and again, if that's not the case, and it's just the projector, this is all I have to go with, is that it's there's a haze on it. Okay. If you use Lightroom at all, I don't, but Lightroom has a dehazer. You can just snap that right up. Otherwise, uh, the, the camera raw part of, of Photoshop, you can you can get you can adjust it. Like I'm forgetting the slider, uh, and you can get rid of it, the hazy part in there too, and just kind of snap that up a little bit. Um, that said, nice bright white without. Here, here's the problem on whites. If, and I'm not looking at this to see if this has been like. There's a, a color back there, and you've just replaced white, you know, in processing. It's hard. It, it's really easy to put too much light on your white background because the light will round the bars a little bit. As it'll bleed around if it's more than about a stop brighter than what you've got on your bars itself. Just let that sink in and, and remember it if you're ever trying to do like high key portraiture stuff it wants to be white it can't be white um i would love to see a little more fluid um composition in flowers again it's a competition this is a nice shot to start with and now you start to play with it a little more as it is it's a seven but you're 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 not there yet. Also, I'm seeing in the background, I'm seeing an area back here. That's, that's actually the screen. That's the screen. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. Ignore that. <laughs> and you said something, correct? Thank you. Hat with flowers. So we're, we're, we're back on the grass again, but it's total different lighting. And remember what I said, don't put the camera and the light anywhere near each other. So this light is way, is like right on us here up onto the left a little bit. You can see that from the highlight. It's cool. What it's doing in the grass, we don't know. What it's doing with the, the little, is that a buzz or a drink? I don't know really. Um, with with the daisies, the the daisies don't interact intuitively, at least with the hat that I can see. So again, light the hat from the sides, pick it up, get it off the grass. I don't know why it's on the grass, other than the hat lighting, and then that's what you had to work with. It's a very cool subject, but just bring it inside, put on a hat rack. Put it at the hat rack in front of a window. Make it a hazy, sunny, you know, evening with golden light coming through, and then put white light on the hat and see what you get. It's a very cool subject. Don't give up on it, but just not here. Six. <clears throat> Two 
supermarket flowers. And you did them justice. So beautiful lighting. This one needs the stroke. Okay. I would, you're just really picky. This whole area here needs a white card. So where's the light? The light's up here, right? It's soft enough. It's beautiful. Very well exposed. You got all the saturation in the world. Just throw a little white card down in here somewhere. You can also use a little mirror. You, you can go to Home Depot or Lowe's. They'll sell one square foot mirror tiles. Buy two of them. Leave one 12 inches. Cut the other one into strips. Cut some of those strips down. And you got all the cool little lighting things you ever wanted to do. And some of that green... Stick them stuff that 3M makes, you know, that, that stays sticky forever. And put that up against a little block and you can run your, your all those little mirrors and light everything in there individually if you had to. But this needs a, to be just a little brighter. It's just a little brighter, okay? Just again, this is from decades of doing this kind of stuff. Beautifully lit, it's a seven. I really want something in this shot to be in focus. I'm not sure why it's not. And there's some real processing artifacting. See these edges right here? All that. See this edge coming down here? I'm not sure what that's about. Something in here has got to be in focus. Like if you're shooting Mylar, and this could be a really cool shot. These guys, the vases have to be in focus. Also, don't leave yourself a gap between the purple one and the kind of uh, orangey colored one. Let that orange one fall behind the purple one. Like you've got these three. You're better off always with odd numbers of items. This would work with four, but you got to slide him back in there just a little. Composition 101. Something's going on down in here. And some, somewhere we, we got to have these sharp. Otherwise, it's just, to me, it's just not working at all. It's a six. Full showers. This is a great thing to learn how to do still life on. Because you've got shininess in their little jackets, and you've got texture in the way the fur is sculpted. You've got a white base, which, boy, you just had everything. And now the guy gives me a white base to work with. And now I can't get any detail on the white base, blah, 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 blah. So you, you've, got, you've got everything you needed to work. Again, give me a one pixel uh, stroke, guys. This is, again, I think most of us would all go great. It's all way too heavy. All the judges would agree there. We really want one pixel, two max. Lighting wise, we've got one light up above to the left, and it kind of works. It's a little hot in, in here on the jacket, but that's not the end of the world. It's showing the slickness of it, but it also shows the texture. And that's very nicely done. Okay, that's a seven. Oh my God, they're all sevens. Okay. What am I thinking? Oh. <laughs> What's the most important part of this? The background color? 
one of the items. Because right now, the choice of the background is killing the items. If this background was speed up coffee table, if it was a stainless steel doctor's office, if it was a state, you know, anything but, but something with this much color in it, your items would stand out. Very impressed with your masks, by the way. This is your color, is the glove. And it's because of the way it's lit, lights over the head, over top. And that's, wow, that's, that's a, a still life final project. Is light an exam glove and make it attractive. Um, only thing I can think of is get your lights down on the sides, put a reflector over the top. Now, you can, you can put air in that glove. They blow up great. They make super great looking turkey looking things for kids. You can fill them full of water. My, my grandkids do that all the time. You, you can blow a little bit of air in there so the fingers will have, looks like little white sausages. Tie it off, hide the tie behind the testing box. And at least you've got, you've got something going on, but you need to not have the lights so flat on the glove, get rid of the red background, it's killing you. It's a cool concept, keep working on it. There's gotta be a way that this really says COVID. And right now, all I can see is that, that, back, that background, it's a six. Who do you want to make your rule a color? Just make white. This is the size that I want. I want one pixel, but just make it a color. I, it's very effective, but just make it a color. Also, You've got a ton of wasted spacing. Okay, that's the bad news. The good news is it's beautifully lit. It's got all the impact in the world. Um, One thing you could do to add to this, I'm assuming this is on black, some black reflective surface. If it wasn't reflective, by the way, black velvet is the only black surface you will ever get that will actually go black, other than like black plexi, or black mylar, something like that, to give you the reflection. Black velvet really, really sucks up light. Now, that said, your yellows are a little hot, I'm being very picky. They're out of gamut, what's called out of gamut. They're running the yellow. If you looked at your histogram, the yellows will be bang right up at the top on the right hand side. If there was a light in the back facing forward, you'd be backlighting all these little hairs. So now you've got the glow from the boss on the boss looking up at the wheat or the grasses, whatever they are. That's the grasses, not wheat. And then the little light from the back, just light, light those little hairs up just a little bit. That adds just that extra little pop. It's definitely so. You guys are going to be here at midnight. I hope they're not. So we're just running through these, right? Okay. Yeah. This is seven.
بدهید Signed A, still life. Honorable mention. Screwed, James Chalan. Neon Wheat, Neil Hunter. April Showers, James Chalan. Golden, Neil Hunter. And equal merit. Shiny Slinky, Charlene Federowitz. Bulb Swirls, Charlene Federway. Supermarket Flowers, Neil Hunter. Okay. On to Salon. These are the ones you said I could really hammer, right? If you'd like. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm killing you time wise. Cranford Milburn, assigned salon, still life. Still life a la Frank Lloyd Wright. This is very nicely done. But I, if I'm going to see this picture, it's got to be way closer to that lamp because right now it first of all i'm not sure that you need it you can you can certainly get away without it push the flowers back a little bit i love the way it's lit and the background and the exposure matches the background etc cetera, etc cetera. but but the, the picture is kind of killing you here it's a seven it's a seven fish on the menu don't mind the texture at all it's kind of neat but the lighting's just dead flat overhead um try coming in from the sides try coming from the back more on this one just it's just going to change everything it's just the way it is it's set up like delic light bulb what I said for the other shot, oh, oh my God, this is okay. Hundreds of times, everything I said on, on the one in the previous class, I'll say on this one. Um, once again, I love, love the red across the top. You can, you can solder the wiring to this base and light those filaments and have a drop dead killer shot, but right now it's very nice. Also, you need the white score around it, seven. Glass jug with beads. Beautiful. Very nicely done. I love the violet part coming out of the glass jug slash vase slash whatever. It's right here, bother me a little bit. Let's bring them around front a little bit, bring them into the shot just a little bit. But as crazy as this background is, I really, really like it. I like it. I especially like the way you've treated the violet coming out of the top of this. I think it's really, really nicely done. Let's just... The life with oranges and jug. Classic Andrew Wyatt stuff. You way too much space here and, and arguably too much on this side, but that said, the lighting is right out of a Wyatt. You know, and, and the, the texture, the feel, the whole bit. Very, very, very nice. That's a seven. Charcuterie board. Mm 
texture doesn't necessarily bother me, but the light overhead on the top of that cheese kills it. So this is a, this is absolutely a case where you want the lights to be behind, almost to the back of the table, facing at a 45 degrees coming forward. That would just completely change the shot. And you might play with it and put it on the grapes side as your highlight. Now you got to do it the other one for the wedge of cheese here as I'm thinking about it. Two lights, back corners, bring them forward, a little bit of a reflector, totally different shot. As it is, the overhead light on that cheese is just killing that. It's a six. Where's the bread? How many lights do we have, guys? Okay, yes. Okay. With the ground, it kind of works. What doesn't work for me is that we have no okay. It's a choice of background, and that's fine. It's very cool. It's a seven. This is a high key. Now, this is why you overlap. When you have three items, they're always overlap. That little glass being over, overlapping the rear glass just enough to show its white edge really, really helps this shot. That one. And So, what do you think for our lighting? I'm guessing this is the same table. I might be completely wrong. Um, right now, you've just got a collection of well, heirlooms, rather dully lit. And there's nothing for me that kind of holds my interest here. It's a six. Any coloring recipe? Too well to kind of get it, but I get it. Um, again, drop your light. Put it almost down to the table. And you've got a totally different shot. It's a clever concept. Like composition wise, there's just so many elements and they're kind of not working, they're not touching each other. Um, it's a seven. Abstract lens ball. What this is, I'm assuming this is a, a you know, what you call it, a lens ball on a stand on something with this reflecting. My problem is with this horizon line here. If that was all one thing, or if, it ref or if the horizon hit the bottom of what I think is supposed to be the stand, and I might be wrong, but I'm, I'm, I'm looking at that thinking that's the bottom. That's where the horizon line should be. That's where that break should be. That's my problem with this. The concept is very cool. Like the bottom half of the shot is just as cool as the top half of the shot. And they don't need to be, to me, almost they don't need to be in the same picture. Does that make sense? As it is, it's a seven. Like refraction. Can you hear my brain like exploding? A little bit. It's very clever. Very cool design. Very nicely done. No idea how you did it, but it really works. It's a seven. Here we go. Very nice. Got the light low down, skimming across that table. A little reflector coming in from the left hand side might have helped just a little bit, or even a mirror just to give me a little, little bit. 
on the left side of that top pair and a little bit of line there, just a little something to reflect some light back in, but a bit nice as it is as a seven. That's where I want you to put the light, guys. Sorry, Salon Still Life, honorable mention. Still Life a la Frank Lloyd Wright, Peter Schmeichel. Where's the bread, Natalie Gregoria. Blue glasses and high key, Ellen Stein. Cheryl Gilfillian. And equal merit, psychedelic light bulb, Natalie Gregoria. Glass jug with beads, Ellen Stein. Still life with oranges and jug, Cheryl Gilfillian. Light bulb refraction, Ellen Stein. Ellen, how much time do I have? Yeah. Sorry? Yeah. On the big wheel? <laughs> Only have three on this one. Okay. Cranford, Milburn, Open B. Just a blue one. Right. right. Good information. Yeah, sorry. I'm Stretched with dinner. I love it. Hey. I love it because everything's sharp, nice background, soft focus, seven. Orchid brilliance. Roof on the right hand side is just killing you. I would get rid of it. Also get rid of this little right down in there. Little brightness businesses get rid of them. Okay, it's a seven. Frank leg lunch. There's another fine. <laughs> Well, that pressing. Open B, honorable mention. Orchid Brilliance, Alpha Guccia. Crab Leg Lunch, Alpha Guccia. And equal more. Stretched with Dinner, Alpha Guccia. <laughs> I didn't have to agonize over these at all, did I? Uh, no. Okay, great. Did well. Crawford uh, Milburn, open A. Sculpture.
Building sculptures is really, really, really difficult because you have to add your take on it. Otherwise, you're, it's just a record of what somebody did. Nice shot, properly exposed, seven. Sunset on the bay. You're going to shoot a lot of sunset stuff. You want to look up all the different styles of uh, luminosity masking and all that. You start getting a lot of detail in these shots that, that you could be getting if, if you were shooting it and, and processing it uh, correctly is not really the right word, but but in a, a more modern, I want to say, up-to-date fashion. Uh, the luminosity masking especially will just give you outrageous detail in a shot just like this, which your camera just like hates. Okay, as it is, it's a six. Main lantern. Very nicely done. I would I would cut back your your background a lot, and you can probably do that in Camera Raw or Lightroom. Uh, just take that orange slider and drop it, uh, drop the luminosity on it, and just darken it down. If you're going to have again, it's a it's a competition. If you're going to have wrinkles, you want to have wrinkles all over the place, like drape it okay otherwise you got to get rid of that stuff for competitions now let's look at the guy let's look at him leave the head out of it for the moment the sleeve and all this the bag all this is very very nicely done because of this light on the left highlight on the on this face though is just a little bit too hard and it's a little too much of it. That light wanted to be a little bit further around for his face, but then you might have lost the sleeve and the bag. You would have kept the bag. You might have lost a little bit of the detail on the sleeve and all. Tough, tough shot. Uh, you might want to just just darken that edge down just a little bit. You're, you're, what you've done is correct. You've got the main light on the right-hand side. That's giving the shadow on his nose. And then you've got the key light coming in from the back. And that's exactly where you want it. You're just a little hot on his head. That's a, oh, that's a seven. Very nicely done. Unless you did that as something like unique and they set it up for you. This is called Mr. Gold. So, if you don't. I don't know where this is. There's two ways to look at that. Did you set this shot up and light it completely? Or is this a sculpture somewhere? Or is this a you know an actor somewhere? I, I it's it, it's very hard to put all this together and to, to judge it in that light. So the image itself, it, it's interesting enough. Uh he's a little hot, a little hot, but no big deal. Great texture in his eyes. I'm not sure if these are, are if his ears or if this is just a, a highlight from, from the gold, you know, the spray that they have on his face, or if this is a sculpture. I'm not sure. Um, that said, it's it's a seven. Be completely wrong. This looks like this black background has been added just to, from the treatment of the edging here. Because the treatment of the edging should show this fine hairiness detail we're losing as we did the background. Okay. That's the way I'm going to judge it because that's the way it looks to me. It's a six. 
runner on the beach. Okay, now, now we have a white stroke that we don't need, but that's kind of the way you want it to look. The shots that, that are good for the wall and there's shots that mean something to you because you were there or this is a person that you know and there's shots for competition. This is a wall shot. Competition, we have no impact. Um, There's not enough going on here to make this an interesting four competition shot. It's a six. Great blue heron. Yes, it is. He's nicely sharp. You've got the background just soft enough. And, and he might be right up against that back tree. Um, very nicely done, it's a seven. Still life. So you know what I'm going to say. The uh, the overhead light is way too harsh, and the whole shot is way too bright. Lighting coming from the sides would be just a completely different story. This basket and this basket would have as much texture as this guy. Okay, this guy would stay pretty much the same. It's a six. Don't judge me. Okay. One thing you can. One thing we've we've not had a, a case of backgrounds yet of a swept background. And guys, this has a pattern to it, so it makes sense that it goes straight up. But if you have something that that doesn't have a pattern, or it's just a color, it has no need to do burden. You can let it lay, make the whole horizon much easier for you to deal with it could be on a 45 degree angle because once you put it in two dimensions you can't tell that it's not there we're I mean, looking for an opportunity to say that this one being vertical makes sense because it's a blanket okay marty mccall i love the composition it's nice and sharp seven At the lake. Make the composition, the curve of the lake really works. It's hard to get detail in snow without looking dirty. So, this is very smart. This is something I should always remember. This, so there's no need to have this stroke on here, right? Because it's not black. It shows us what white is. Otherwise, I might think this is blown out white, and it's clearly not because the stroke is white. Get it? So, like I said, it's hard to shoot this and have it look like something. Ignore it. I love the composition of what's going on here. It's more of a wall shot than a, than a competition shot, but it's nicely done. Morning fog. Same thing, we don't need the stroke. It's an interesting shot. Um, this is seven. So, you know, look into this to tell it, to have it tell more of a story. A second chair would help. It's clearly not waiting for anybody because there's no second chair. They put her in a single table. It's a cafe. I 
not sure we need the black hat. Her pose is nice, the coloration is nice. Man, I wish there was a second chair. I wish there was more of a story. Is she waiting for somebody? You know, you know, you see what I'm saying? Like, like just a little bit, another element there would, would just tell a whole different world. And and right now she's just she's just alone, which maybe that's the story. It's very nicely done. It's just Your B class or your A class? A class. Not, not the salon class. Okay. Guys, how many times have judge, you heard judges say that they've got to see the whole thing? Okay. Like competition shot. If you have another shot with that whole thing in there. What makes this is that this is curving one way and the entire rest of the background, so much of it is curving to the right, which I like that, that the, the, the cross purposes there. Um, but that that being off here, now it really bothers you uh, as it's six. If you have another shot or you have cropped into this for some reason, you know, again, if for competition, you really want to see it. It's a six. Morning waterfront. And we don't need the stroke. We have lights on anymore. Maybe they stopped that during COVID because nobody goes into the office. Um, it's it's okay, but it 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 needs some pizzazz. It needs something going on. Got a lot of wasted space down here. Got some up at the top. Like to me, the most interesting thing is kind of what's going on in the pilings. And we need a lot more lights, different day. Someone. Seven. But Okay, I will mention at the lake, James Chillan. Morning fog, Wendy Kaplan. And equal merit, man with lantern, Nellie Stolar. Great blue heron, Charlene Federitz. Marty McCaw, Neil Hunter. What are we going? Ten minutes? Now, about fifteen. Prepare for Milburn Open Salon. How many do we have? Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Yes. Um. Sorry. Um. Tree bark. Very interesting shot. Oddly, this is the kind of thing that might sell on one of the fulfillment sites like Fine Art America, whatever.
blue, blue flowers are real easy to get. And I, I would love for you to put your light behind it more and see what you come up with. You can put your, you can put your light off to one corner and shoot through it and then put two reflectors up. See my hand? Put two reflectors, one on either side of your lens. That's just all they are, it's white cards, okay? Just white mount board. One light coming through the, the flower, a couple of reflectors, take them back, you go back and forth, back and forth. Maybe you need them both, maybe you don't. But just let's give some life to this poor thing because it, it's a nice composition coming up with the stem coming up the angle like this, but it just dies. So let's give it some, again, it's all about lighting. So let's give this some light. Okay, it's a six. Moon burrowing owls. <laughs> or hen pecking or owl pe pecking, whatever. One knows they're sharp. One seems to be taking it pretty well. We don't see the big fight afterwards, probably. Okay. So, flowers behind glass. This kind of shows the importance of the choice of flowers itself. To me, this doesn't have anywhere near the pisaeus that the first ones we saw against, just from the difference in flowers. So the background's pretty much the same, the vase is clearly the same, but the flower choice is different and it's a little blander. It's just not really working. Um, yeah. you know, so if, if you have this, you're gonna continue to make a, like a series out of it, find some real seriously impactful flowers Bird of paradise flowers, obviously, uh, stargazers, maybe, you know, that kind of thing to really see what happens here. And as you, you can create a series of these, uh, as is this one's a six. Winter portrait. I'm not really a bird guy, so I don't know which foot is supposed to be ahead of the other foot, but God knows he's sharp. All I ever get is their behinds. Um, it's a seven, seven, seven. Black waterfalls. So now we have to talk about water. So very nice composition in that it's almost totally ringed in, in the leaves, which is really, really, really nice. Now, I, I have a thing about, about overexposing your waterfalls. I mean, God knows, you know, you know, we want to have the long exposure to show this, this creamy milkiness as it, as it comes down, what you get from a long exposure, but then it's very easy to blow out areas and make it look like um, dry ice fog. You know what I'm saying? My go-to uh, exposure is around a tenth of a second. I want to see as much detail in the creaminess, if that makes any sense, as I can possibly get. A tenth of a second, an eighth of a second, a fifteenth of a second, somewhere around there, depending upon the height of the fall, because it does gain, you know, it'll, it'll gain a little bit of speed. Um, it, it will do you a lot more than, than what you've got right here. You, hopefully, you guys travel with tripods. Hopefully, you can. You, you're shooting this. And you're, you're bracketing, you have dark exposures, you have light exposures. If that's the case, then you have a darker exposure of this. Just mask it out, you know, mask in just the, the darker exposure here. And, and that might be all you need. It's a seven, but it could have a lot more. Crispy morning view of NYC. A okay, much nicer view. Sadly, the other one just didn't have the lighting. There was just nothing there. Um, this really works. Uh, God, the color on the piling is interesting. 
Very nice composition. It's a seven. Eagle with dinner remnants. Dinner remnant. Nice and sharp. It's a great pose. It's a seven. Flowers on table. So these are the people that didn't have the nerve to put these in the still lives, or they had a bunch of still lives that them here. That's probably what the story is. Okay. So what do you think I'm going to say? I'm going to say the lighting's just flat overall. And if you didn't have like a, a cloth. And have it folded in a cool manner, or if you pick up, I know you people, the people at home can't see this. They so see you have your square or whatever. You have that cloth. Pick it up about here. Okay, think the rule of thirds. Okay, pick it up on one of those borders, take it, shake it, and lay it down. And what that does is it kind of triangulates everything and it'll create some nice folds for you. You might do that five or six times and all of a sudden it's going to be perfect. An old, old New York stylist taught me that years ago on towels or on flows over a piece of furniture. And, and that would, because right now this is just merely placed there. It's a little wrinkly, blah, blah, blah. It's just not attractive. If you're going to leave the little you know, leafy bits you know, they're not, they're not helping. It's just bland overall. If you like doing still lifes, put your lights on the sides, get some cooler flowers, and let's see what happens. Six. Spring migration. It's barely sharp up here. You're real sharp down here in the foreground. Just barely, barely making it. You're okay. It's a seven. Soaking wet red wing blackbird. Oh my God. So the, the what bothers me here, of course, is is the background. It's just so bright, and that to me, it kind of takes away from from where the interest is. You know what I mean? I don't know how you would deal with it. It's it's a cool shot. Maybe you can crop in a lot more, kind of get rid of that a little bit. It's okay. It's a seven, but it's just doesn't have that impact because of that background and the fact that it's so hot on top. It's a seven. Raising number two. A nice shot. I'm, I'm not sure we need this balloon on the lower left. Rule of thumb when you're shooting these is to get the balloons between because between you and the sun. So if you had walked to your left and had the sun going through those balloons, they would have just exploded in color. They're nice the way they are, but it's just a completely different world. As is, it's a seven. Herbert Very nice composition. It's a little hot. They're the same kind of background color we had with that poor red wing blackbird. Um, remember the feeling that you had in the shot in the previous class on, on the store-bought flowers and how gloriously saturated they were? Not that they were oversaturated. They were saturated because the, 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 amount of, the exposure was correct. This is just hot and meaning too bright and you're losing the blossom. There's some nice glow in this 
but th but these guys are just seem like they're just overexposed. I might be wrong, but they're just to me that looks really really hot. It's insane. Talking before we got started about doing three architecture judgings and how I was just seeing the same stuff over and over and over and over. Very interesting take on this. I don't know that I've seen this in years or ever, maybe. Um, very interesting composition, beautifully done. That's a silence. Hi, Lars. Oh, now we're shocked. Now we're getting some um, totally different world. So same comment on the orange when it wants to be behind the purple one. One of the things about mylar, you see how well the mylar works when it's wrinkled? Wrinkled even. I did a whole calendar here. Studio on looking through my in, into my arm. If you wrinkle the entire thing, it just explodes. It's just very, very, very cool. So take this same concept and just keep working it with that mylar, and that will help your reflections then as well. It's a seven. Two bottles. So if the light had come in from the left rather than the right, the foreground bottle would also be backlit. They would both, the, the green bottle would stay the same. The bronze bottle then would have some cool detail in it. Of course, the, the problem there is you tend to lose the cut in the glass and that's where mirroring can come in. You can run mirrors almost facing each other in front of that, and all of a sudden you're gonna get all these highlights from those mirrors. Um, it's a great idea. Just keep working with it as it is. It's a six, but it could work a lot better. I'll go pen. Very nice, very sharp. Eating a dead plant, but I might be wrong. Um, it's a seven. Flamingo dream. Yes, it is. It's a nice effect all the way around. String of whatever you've done with with uh, you know the, the the white corners and and it's very 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 nice effect. It's unique. I don't think I've ever seen it before. Obviously, the bird is just as sharp as it could be right where it needs to be. It's a seven. Breaking the crop number Oh, very nice. The grass, you have what are called neon greens in the grass. It's extremely common. And you can look up on, on Yahoo or on, uh, no, on YouTube, sorry, um, on how to fix neon green grass. And there's a like an action that you can download for that. And it just makes a grass green looking rather than, than so bright fluorescy green. Well, it's what happens when the sun goes through it. Um, as far as the horses and the, and, the, and the guy and his little, you know, my God, homemade threshing machine there. Um, it's nice, but God, I just wish you were maybe lower, like squatting down, looking up at the horses, making them look a little grander. You would still see the guy. You would still see the machine and, and whatever grain it is that he's working with here. But as is, you're just standing straight, looking straight in. And to me, if you were down, 
When you look down, your subject looks grander, okay? And I think we kind of need that here because again, that's the difference between a regular shot, a normal shot, and a competition shot, and a winning one. So think about that, Daniel. As it is, okay, but if you're ever back, you know, you know think about that. Black crown night hair. I'll take your word for it. Great separation using your focus. He jumps off the band. He's brighter, a sharper than black. It's a seven. Washington Square Park Panorama. When you do something like this, again, it's the difference between every single shot has a stroke, doesn't it? It's the difference between a wall shot, because you were there, and a competition shot. There's nothing in here that's drawing my interest. If it was golden hour, morning or evening, especially evening, you'd have equally the number of people. It'd be a completely different feel. If you were a lot closer to the buskers, and you showed the arch in the background, it would be a completely different feel. But right now, it's just sort of, okay, here I am, the snapshot. Now let's see what I can do. And this is, this is not your, your end all shot. It's a six. I guess it's a thing there. Fine. Seven. 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 Right. Open Salon, honorable mention, Mated Burrowing Owls, Arlene Sopanzetti. Winter Portrait, Ron Dank. Crispy Morning View of NYC, Peter Schmeichel. Raising Number Two, Ron Dank. Mylar Still Life, Ellen Stein. Raking the crop number two, Ron Dank. And equal merit, palm tree bark, Ellen Stein. Bell Labs, Peter Schmeichel. Flamingo Dream, Natalie Gregoria. Black Crown Night Heron, Ryan Kershaw. And he's all. You need little recorder with your oh. yeah, right? it's easier. What time is it? 20 afternoon. And what what time do they throw us out? 9 30? I'll say good night to everybody online and I hope you enjoyed the competition. Have a good Thank night. You, Thank you, you too. About the lighting especially. <laughs>